Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my very first set of cards using the September 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Before I get any further into today's video, we'll talk about the elephant in the room. I know she's not an elephant, she's a cat, but Aspen has decided that for now, she's gonna be my supervisor to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I've already tried to move her a couple times and she just comes back and gets comfortable. At least this time, she's kind of off to the side. So we'll just try to ignore her like she's not here looking over our shoulder. Yesterday, I shared with you a look at the first set of cards I made using the latest sheet load of cards, and I'm back today to show you how I made those, and I do have a few tips along the way. Now, also today, my team of collaborators will be posting their first sets. They will have videos here on YouTube, posts over on their Instagram accounts, and posts on their blog. You can find everybody linked in the description box below. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. If you haven't yet seen yesterday's video and downloaded the September 2021 sheet load of cards, I will have it linked in that description box below and at the end of this video as an end card. And another thing I want to remind you about is if you want to show us your sheet load, you can use these hashtags on YouTube or Instagram. And if you want to send in a card, my PO box is in the description box below. I do have a whole video that gives you the guidelines on how to show us your sheet load. So like always, it is linked in that description box below as well. Now, if you're a channel member, later today over on our community tab, I'm going to have a free cut file for you that helps you cut the image piece and the mat behind it. So make sure to keep an eye out for that. But if you're not a channel member yet, don't worry, I will show you today how to cut these pieces at home. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. Because I am kind of over this summer heat wave that's been happening in my area, I decided to go with some fall cards, hoping it would usher in the season a little bit quicker. For my sentiment, I will be stamping Happy Fall Y'all from the Teresa Talks Fall Scrapping for Less stamp set. For my card stocks, I will be using a mixture of off-white and craft, both for my card bases, my mats, and my sentiment pieces. And then for my two pattern papers, I chose these leafy patterns from a Recollections Hot Buy from Michaels. Now this is one from a couple years ago, so you probably can't find this exact paper pad, but I am pretty sure you have something in your stash that will work. Now, I will be using 12 by 12 papers today, and the sheet load does call for 12 by 12, but later on in the month, I'll be back to show you how this sketch is pretty darn handy if you like to use six by six paper pads. Now, as I add more tools and products during the process, I will let you know in the voiceover. But if I leave you with any questions, as always, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Before I get to that, I did wanna stop by with a special channel member shout out. I would like to say welcome and thank you to my newest paper trimmer level member, Anne True. Thank you so much, Anne, for your support. Thank you to all of my channel members, and if you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. 
To get started today, I will be cutting my two pattern papers per the instructions on the sheet. Now I will give you some specific dimensions, but you always have that printable to refer to. I cut that first piece into two strips that were four and a quarter inches wide. And let me tell you, when you have a cat off to the left fighting you for your paper, that is not as easy as it sounds. I eventually did get both of those cut, and then it was time to cut them down to the final sizes. You'll see here the 12 pieces you need, and because these add up to 12 inches tall for both of those strips, you'll want to not make generous cuts is what I call them. Normally when I am cutting something, I will cut it on the outside of the measurement mark, but for these I cut them on the inside of the measurement mark. That way when I get to the end, that last piece isn't too short. Now with the way that you kind of hide the gap between these pattern papers, it won't be the end of the world, but sometimes I just like to get myself used to that. Once I have those first eight pieces cut, I then take that second strip and cut it into three pieces that are three inches tall. I then brought in the second piece of pattern paper and made those same exact cuts. Now my pattern paper fortunately doesn't really have a set direction, but if yours does, you'll want to keep that in mind when you make those first slices. For now, I am going to skip CS1 and CS2 and go to cutting CS3. What you'll need here are two strips for each card that are four and a quarter inches wide by one inch tall. The first thing I do for this is cut my piece of cardstock in half at four and a quarter, and then I just cut at one inch until I had eight total pieces from each of those strips, so 16 total. Now I'm gonna go over CS1 and CS2. I will be using this off-white for CS1, and then later I will use some scraps for CS2. Now you will want to note on the printable that 2.625 is the same as two and five eighths. To get started on the CS1 pieces, I cut two strips off the top of my cardstock that were two and a half inches tall. Now you'll see here you have quite a bit left that you could always use scraps for these pieces. Once those were cut, I then would cut until I got eight pieces that were two inches wide. But because I do have a shortcut for myself and channel members, I will stop after two, but you would just want to keep cutting. Now for the CS2 pieces, I did bring in some scraps and I cut those so they were the same two inches wide, but then when I go to cut the height, it needs to be two and five eighths, which on the printable, it says 2.625 inches. The five eighths inch mark is halfway between two and a half and two and three quarters. So I just slice those two down and you'll see that they are the same width and there's just a little extra at the bottom. That way when you offset them, you have a border on the right and the bottom and they align at the top. Here in just a minute, I will show you how to cut that angle, but you would always be free to just forget about that angle if you don't wanna do that and just leave all of the angles at 90 degrees. For my CS1 and CS2 pieces, I went ahead and used the bonus printable for channel members this month, and I cut 9 from an 8.5 by 11. This way later if I accidentally stamp one wrong, then I do have an extra. This free cut file will be available to channel members after 9.30 a.m. Central Time this morning over on the Community tab. Now I'm gonna show you how to cut those angles if you will be cutting all of these by hand. What you'll wanna do is line up a CS1 and CS2, and then the end that's lined up, just cut a little angle in it. Now the exact angle doesn't measure, but you'll wanna make sure that you cut these together so that when you do layer them, the angle is the same. Now you can use these pieces on top of the remaining rectangles to use as a template to cut the rest. Now another option would be to bring in like this little Fiskars photo trimmer, line up both pieces on the trimmer, and then slice an angle. 
then you could either just continue this for each of the sets or you could use these as a template for the other pieces to hand cut. This next step is one I would usually skip over, assuming everybody knows how to cut a card base. But you know what? If you are a new card maker, you might need some help. What I did here was cut four pieces of off-white cardstock in half, so it was four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall, and then I folded that in half. For the sentiment pieces, I did bring in my Misty so I could just set the stamp up once and then stamp it eight times. I am using Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus Ink and then once again the Happy Fall Y'all stamp from the set. Now normally I would put my piece down in the lower right hand corner, but because of that angle it won't sit straight. So I do place it in the upper right so I have the right angle with the right angle of my Misty. Once I have my stamp in place, I check it on the cover to make sure it's straight across and then I ink up my stamp and stamp the piece and repeat that until all eight pieces have a sentiment. The next step for me was to place my CS3 strips at the top and bottom of piece C. Now you can adjust how far you want your cardstock strip to peek out from behind the back of it. For myself, I tried to get about an eighth of an inch on the top and bottom. I continued adding adhesive to the back of the pattern paper piece and aligning it with the cardstock strips until I had all eight of those completed. The next pieces that I adhered together were the sentiment and the craft cardstock piece that goes behind it. I placed adhesive on all of the edges and then I aligned the two pieces at the top leaving about an eighth of an inch on the side and bottom. If it fits better with the look of your card, you could always have the extra be to the left side of the sentiment piece. That is up to you. Once all of the sentiment pieces were finished, I did decide that I wanted to follow the sketch and put a little element to the left of my sentiment. So I chose this little leaf die from Spellbinders and cut eight of those out from some craft cardstock scraps. Now all of the individual pieces are ready, so it's time to get the cards put together. I am going to show you one from start to finish and then I will go and do more of an assembly line process. For the first card, I place piece A and B on the card front and you'll notice A gets aligned at the top and B gets aligned at the bottom. I did have to stop briefly to reload my ATG, but when I did, I placed adhesive on the back of the matted piece C, and then that covers up the opening on the front of the card. The sentiment was the next piece to get adhesive, and you'll notice that I aligned the top of this with the craft cardstock mat. Now you can adjust this how you want. You could always align it to the pattern paper piece. To add some dimension to the card, I use foam dots on my leaf and pop that up to the left side of my sentiment. Once that first card was put together, I used more of an assembly line process for the remaining seven cards. The first step was to place A on B on all of the card fronts, then I placed C, then the sentiment piece, and then the foam on the leaves, and then finally the leaves. Now while you watch me work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question is inspired by one of those random questions that sometimes pops up on your Facebook feed. Sometimes it's from a news station, other times it's just from some random brand. But the other day, I saw one that said, what is something that you don't like that many other people enjoy? I would love for you to leave your answer in the comment section below. And don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered it and would like me to see it. My answer is totally not craft related, but yours could be if that's what you want to share. 
for me, the thing that I don't like that many other people do is coffee. I cannot stand it. Really, I don't like any hot beverages. And now it's time for a look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget now to go visit all of the collaborators linked in that description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.